Okay, my outstanding friends, once again, Roger, and I am today talking about the Rainbow River. Well, why is it a rainbow? Well, we know it's a river, but why is it a rainbow river? Now, you see these different colors? They're not just different colors for no specific reason. They say, oh, well, I know why they're different colors. There's different, back there. There's different um, algae growing in there. There's different whatever it is growing there. Well, that's true. Why is it this different color? Why is some green? Why is some blue? Why is some red and yellow and orange and all these different colors in there? And they're all there. And the reason is they are transition metals. You say, oh, oh, oh big deal. Transmission metals, what's that got to do with it? That is health. That is biology. That is from blood. All right, before you get crazy, just stop and think. Just take a second and stop and think. You look all around the world, Yellowstone and all of these places where they got these yellow bubbling pits and green and all kinds of crazy colors. That is from digestive systems. I'm not kidding you. That is from digestive systems. They're either from, they're either from intestines, which I believe this is, or they are from like kidneys and bile and... Um, areas that have a lot of reactive biology going on and that is really literally what cr cr volcanoes are from the earth is made of creatures get over it there was giants in the earth in those days that is just a fact and I have shown this in every single possible way and if any single geologist on the face of the planet will step up and get talk to me and discuss this openly we will get to the end of this story but instead I'm told to go look it up oh go look it up we've noticed we've studied this for years well good you missed everything my friends you missed every little thing you see this is a rainbow swamp the waters in there are are tainted with blood chemistry, and that is transition metals is blood chemistry. What do we got here? All right, that, this is what's going on. There's biology growing in there. Yes, it's some kind of algae or whatever it is, plant life. But that plant life is literally feeding off of the transition metals that are underneath in the biology. This is sent to me to just today by a friend of mine, Andrew. There's places all over the world that have this kind of crazy looking biology. Look at this. Now, I don't know exactly what this is, but I can tell you what that is. I believe is a tendon anthesis. And this little flap here if you can see it, I think came down to another ball that was in this area, this round area here, and it snapped off. But at any rate, it's this is biology. This is not this is not just accidental. All right, these are the transition metal colors that you know that you were looking at in that river, and we're looking at them all over the earth. Stop and take a minute out of your life and look at what you really see. I get people sending me stuff like this all day long, every day, of things that I post about. And, you know, I have such a wealth of information because I have literally thousands of researchers that are helping me. Look at this. This is biology. That's a cave. Now, when you stop and look and you say, well, what is that thing? What the heck is going on there? And what about this thing here? What That's kind of a strange looking structure. I understand some of these things that most people have, have no clue about because I've studied the rocks and I've studied what most people would say, oh, that's just a rock. No, it isn't. That's a bone. That's the head of a bone. That's the cartilage. That's where the nerves or the veins, the arteries and veins invested. And that is wrapped with a coating they call tunica. The ancient Greeks did. Anything can turn to stone in the correct conditions and, and then anything literally can turn to these kind of colors. You can, you can get anything to turn into almost anything depending upon the conditions that it finds itself in. And if it finds itself in a dense blood 
with a certain chemistry in it that lets it transfer quickly. Because this is what, these are the blood colors. Did I show you this yet? Hold on. That, I don't know what that is, but I'll tell you, it's interesting looking to me. Now, the, that is a, I don't know what it is, but that I kind of have an idea of what it might, it might be, but this is the blood colors, and these are the transition metals, and they give and take. Now, I've been hitting this hard because this is something nobody fully understood before. They've done a lot of work with transition metals and creating different metal, different products and so forth in, in factories and labs. But this is biology. This happens through catalysts and enzymes and bacteria. And what we're looking at in those rivers is literally the, the Earth's bacteria and it's doing its job in that river converting products that come down that river and using them and, and, and feeding off them, literally. And, and that's how your body works. It creates all these different things in your body to make you healthy based on bacteria living in those passageways and having all those different blood metal chemistry in them to take things out of what's coming down that stream and bring them into your body in these different colors so that they literally have these different molecular energies and they can attach and detach and break things and make things and that is how life is is made is in the blood and this is the blood right here that's your blood you know there's a lot of other stuff in there too but this is basically these are transition they transfer things they give oxygen take a, a, away the carbon dioxide they bring in nutrients take away the the nasty stuff that's just the way, that's your life you you are a hundred percent unstable at this moment when you die you become stabilized some turn into nice really fancy looking colors some of them just turn into mud depends on where you are now I just did a thing on Brian Forrester's examination of the, the great pyramids and I believe of the casing a lot of the casing stones were made of ground flesh after they took the metals out. Now this is a countertop. You see this? You see that right there, these two blocks? That is tendon material. See this tendon, tendon? This is in tendon all over the place. Little chunks of it. This is not supposed to, never going to ever happen. No way in the world could this possibly happen, except for the fact that it was all ground up homogeneously. And it has the blood, the black blood and the red blood is still in here. The red turns a little bit brown. And that's the only piece of metal I could find. In a, it's a big counter, and, and that's, that's it. But there is tons of all of these different little flakes of tendon. And that is exactly what would happen if they ground up bodies and then flushed them all with acids and salts and so forth to remove the metals and then congealed the metals and then heated them and, 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 and took them out of the blood. So i got to show you something somebody sent me. <laughs> So here's the blocks that Brian Forrester's looking at at the pyramids, and he's saying it's unusual how they were perfect. Somebody tried to chip these away. But you see this one is a grayish looking, all matrixed up, just exactly like my powder top. This one's got a little reddish in it, but that's the key is the different colors of the blood. I showed you, you got your red and your black blood. Now look at down here. <laughs> Spam. <laughs> it's just about exactly correct. That's my friend uh, Carl. <laughs>